Michelle from Emmeline Bags and I've just made these Laney Jane bags and I'm going to walk you through every step so you can make them too. The Laney Jane bag has a hanging zipper pocket, purse feet, and adjustable shoulder strap. I'm going to show you how to add rivets, locks, metal trim, and make this gorgeous structured bag. Okay, so let's get sewing. Okay, let's just jump right into the instructions. The first thing I want to recommend is that you do print color so that you can see all of the different colors that I've chosen for the exterior and the outer. And we do have things in red where I've noted um, some things that you really need to bring to your attention. Always open and print from Adobe Reader and make sure you choose actual size. If you choose fit to page, you'll get a pattern piece that is way too small. So you can test this by checking your test square on your first pattern piece page on 14. There's also one on page 16. And just put a gridded ruler over it and make sure it is exactly the same size. If it's just a hair smaller, it actually is going to make a huge difference on the pattern page because as your pattern gets bigger, that small hair becomes like an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. Too small, actually. Let's get started on our fabric and interfacing requirements. Uh, I say more fabric may be required if you're using directional print. I don't recommend a directional print for this bag. And a directional print is when you have a print that has an obvious top and bottom. So perhaps um, if you had a print where the there was a, a person, let's say a person, their head would be here and their toes would be here. By the time you wrap that around the back of the bag, the feet would be at the bottom and the head would be at the top. I am going to show you how to make a seam in your pattern piece um, so that if you are making a cotton bag only, and I don't recommend this for the vinyl, but if you're making a cotton bag, you can use a directional print if we just use a different pattern piece. So when we get to the pattern pieces, I'll show you. So if you're, you're in love with your directional print and you want to use it on the body of the bag, I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so let's just jump into exterior fabric. You need three quarters of a yard, whether you're making the light woven cotton version or the vinyl. Only use the vinyl if you're experienced with vinyl, if you know your sewing machine is, is um, heavy duty and if you know that you can sew it because it makes it a lot more difficult. So we do sell these half yard rolls at Emmeline and you can make everything out of it except for when you cut the strap off, um, it creates a piece that is much too small for your pattern pieces. So you either need to get two of these or one full yard piece. For the cotton version of the bag, I'm going to use this beautiful Ruby Star fabric. My outer is going to be this metallic and it's by Sarah Watts. And the lining is going to be this mountain fabric from the Golden Hour collection. So I've already shown you my vinyl. This is my vinyl version and I'm gonna use the same lining for that. Let's just jump in and talk about interfacings because this can be a little bit overwhelming. There's a whole bunch on the list here, but we'll just break it down for you so you can uh, know exactly what I'm talking about. Fusible interfacing says light to medium weight woven cotton. So woven means it looks like fabric. It actually looks a little bit like a thin quilting cotton. It's got threads that go left and right. And this is preferable because it acts like fabric. It doesn't wrinkle. It just adds a little bit of durability and stiffness to your fabric without adding thickness. We will have some coming in at Emmeline that are our brand and they're gonna be different weights. So you could choose the light or medium weight but this is SF101 Shape Flex and I find it works really well. So stabilizers are a little bit different than interfacing. Stabilizers add thickness and structure to your bag. My recommended one is Decoville. In North America, we just call this the regular, regular Decoville and there is a Decoville Light, but if you're in the UK, you may call it Decoville Heavy and it acts a little bit like leather. It has a shiny side that's fusible. It doesn't stick super well, so we iron it on a quite a hot setting and let it sit for a while. And if it starts to peel off, I mean, that's no big deal because it's going to be anchored in other ways. So there is a more affordable version, which is the Pellon Peltex. This is also fusible one side, but as you can see, it does have some qualities which make it crease and bend a little bit more. We're gonna put some other things with our bag, like a fleece if you're using cotton or perhaps foam if you're using vinyl that will hide these creases a bit, 
but this one really is the recommended one for me. Now I've got written down here that there's an optional piece in addition to the Decovel, which is a non-fusible foam. So this foam is called Soft and Stable. It squishes to about one eighth of an inch. It's really easy to sew. And actually, we're not even gonna have it in the seam allowances. It's just gonna add a little bit of thickness and stiffness to your bag to help it stand straight up. You can also get Bozal in our form or a Pellon Flex Foam. And I'm actually just gonna show you what I mean by optional. In my bag here that I've made with our uh, navy vinyl that we sell at Emmeline, I've used, well, let me just get my pattern pieces actually, because then I'll make it really clear to you. Okay, so this is pattern piece P. And pattern piece P sits right here on the outer of the bag. So when you fold these sides over, you will be sewing through this. So you only sew through one thickness of Decoville. And that makes a really nice structure to the bag, but it can be a little bit little bit saggy. So we add an optional piece, which is pattern piece Q. And when we get to the cutting directions, you'll see that it says optional beside it, but I've, I've used it in all my bags because I find that it really adds some structure. This actually just gets fused over top of the other piece and it's out of the seam allowances, so we're not actually sewing through it. So it doesn't matter what sewing machine you have, you'll be able to add this. In um, one bag I made, and I'll show you in a second, my green bag, I did use this and it added some really nice stiffness to the sides of the bag. But in this version here, I actually used soft and stable. This soft and stable. Here, I'll show you what that one looks like. So it gets glued on with a little bit of clear glue to this piece and it just adds a little bit of, of softness. It goes to the inside of the bag, so it's like this. So you still feel this nice, or you still have this nice firmness on the outside of your bag. I'll just show you right here. You have that nice firmness right here, but inside you have this soft edge and it really helps this bag stand up and have a lot of structure. I'll just show you what it looks like without. This green bag still looks beautiful. I've used this and one of these in here. It has a little bit of sag, but it stands up really nice and tall still. So you're, you're probably asking, well, why not just recommend the foam in the beginning? Because you know what? It just adds another thing for you to buy. And if you have some on hand, use it, try it out. But if you've purchased your Decoville already and you wanna try it, just use both of these. Also, I know a lot of our sewers don't want a more cushioned bag. They want something that is just a little bit more firm, like a, a designer bag that has like firmness to it. And if that's the case, you'll want to use just these two. All of the flaps in the bag all have the Decoville, but the cotton version also has fleece. And that's the next thing on our list. So fusible fleece looks like this. And I've put some of it in the flap of the bag for the cotton only version and in the body of the bag. And that will just create a bit of thickness to get it up to the level of vinyl. So you can still use your beautiful cottons and you can have a bag that stands up strong and has a lot of structure. So we've gone through all the requirements. We've got our fabrics, our interfacing, the stabilizers and the fusible fleece. Let's get into our zippers and hardware. You'll need a seven inch long zipper. This is a number three zipper. The coil is three millimeters wide and this is just a smaller zipper that's often used for small zipper pouches, pencil cases, that kind of thing. It's not your big bag zipper and this will be in the top pocket of the bag right here. So this will be cut down to seven inches when we're making the bag. And so you can have a, uh, a zipper that's quite a lot longer and it, it doesn't matter, we're gonna cut it down. We'll also use rivets. I've put in here that they will be medium rivets, but of course, if you're using a much thicker fabric, you probably will go up to large. Our medium rivets at Emmeline have a post that's eight millimeters long. So if you have rivets that are between eight and 10 millimeters on the post, you should be perfectly fine. I've got all of our hardware together in a hardware kit 
And for my gold bag, reaching around here, for my gold bag, I'm going to use our gunmetal hardware. And the rivets are in addition to that. We haven't put the rivets into the kit because a lot of people already have them and also because it's a lot of cutting out. The only change I've made to the hardware kit that Emmeline sells is I'm adding the wide mouth slider. And that is because with vinyl, you need to make sure you have a, a big enough slider for your strap because it's a little bit thicker. Now for the cotton bag, I'm going to do something a little bit different with my hardware kit. So this is the outer for the cotton bag. I do have the gold hardware kit and it comes with the lock and oh there's that pointed trim. But I've got everything else and the rivets. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take out the um, hooks, the hooks and the D-rings and I'm going to use these chain connectors instead. I'm going to show you what that looks like. I did it on my navy bag here. So I'll make a strap for this one that looks like this. Isn't that beautiful? So that's what I'm going to do with my gold one or my gray one with the gold hardware. And the other thing I've done is there are instructions for a magnetic snap in there. So I'm going to swap out that lock and put in a magnetic snap so I can show you how to put one of, of those in as well. Let's talk about tools. You'll need a rotary cutter and ruler and we use this to cut out our rectangle pieces. It's much faster and way more accurate than cutting out squares. I do have templates for the um, stabilizers and such and that is because we have markings for our purse feet. But if you want to cut those out with the rotary cutter and ruler, just give them a quick measure and you can cut those out as well. And you'll need a zipper foot, um, I like a walking foot, some glue, some clear glue. At MLing we sell E6000. It's clear drying, it's fast tack, and we prefer to ship this because it is not flammable, whereas the Fabri-Tac is flammable. A mini screwdriver with a Phillips head. I do like a really good quality precision screwdriver. They have a really strong fine tip on the end and if you search precision screwdrivers you should find one of these. I'm going to go through how to set rivets with you so don't be afraid of that. We've got a great little kit at Emmeline. This one that includes everything you need. I'm going to show you how to use that but I'm also going to show you how to use a press. We have those coming as well. We should have them in about two weeks and um, I'm excited to show those to you. And some tape. Oh, that's my favorite and my most loved notion. I generally use one or two kinds of tape. The Wash Away Wonder Tape is perfect for putting in your zipper pocket. It's a quarter of an inch wide, so sometimes that gets in your seam allowance and that's totally okay because it doesn't gum up your needle. And the reason why it doesn't gum up your needle is it's actually not very tacky. So that's a pitfall if you're adding something like, or if you're making straps or something that needs to be really sticky, but it's a definite benefit if you're going to be sewing through it. So I use this for my zipper pockets or just the one eighth of an inch of our um, Be Creative double-sided tape. If I just use the one eighth or three millimeter size, on the very edge you can get away and it's super sticky and you don't need to worry about gumming up your needle. The five millimeter side size of the Be Creative tape I make or I use in my straps. It's clear and I'm going to be using that after and I'll show you exactly what it's for. All right so that's everything you need to know about supplies. Just want to make a note that our seam allowances are three eighths of an inch and when we attach a zipper we'll use a quarter of an inch but I'll tell you when to do that and our top stitching I generally do at one eighth of an inch. Okay when we come back and I clear all this up we're going to talk about cutting out your pattern pieces. Okay we're at step one cut the pieces. I just recommend you read through all of this. It's all very important. I'm just going to highlight a few things and explain them. Um, it says, where noted, tape the pattern templates with the gray bands together. And you've already seen a bit of this. Just make note to put them right on top of each other and not end to end. 
and uh, the measurements are listed width by height. So when you see nine by three, that is nine wide and three high. And you will only be cutting this box if you're using quilt and cotton, or this if you're using faux leather or vinyl. You're not gonna cut from this and this unless you're doing a bit of a mix where you cut a vinyl body and a quilting cotton flap. If so, you'll cut your front flap from the co quilting cotton section, as well as the requirements for the matching stabilizer. You'll notice this one is a curved front flap. So there is that option as well between the curved, which is pattern piece M, or the pointed version. So you'll need to cut either C or M, depending on if you're doing pointed or curved. And then with it, the flap type stabilizer, which is the interfacing or fleece or decoville, you'll need to choose between I or S. So the pointed flap has its own stabilizer and the curved flap has its own stabilizer as well. Number four, on the cutting list, there is an optional stabilizer cue if you want a slightly more structured bag. That is here. So optional for added structure is Q. This is the one we were talking about earlier. I'm going to do one bag with Decaville and one with foam. So you can add this or cut this out of foam if you like. The shoulder strap. That should be cut from the full width of fabric before you cut any other pieces. So that is F in either the quilting cotton or the vinyl version. When I cut my pattern pieces, often I'll use just a rotary cutter and set them down onto my surface and use this. I find it's fast, it makes straight lines, but you can also trace them. Exterior panel A says on the fold. And that is actually really important, so I've got it in big letters here. This is, um, the fabric needs to be folded and this needs to be placed on the fold. And I'm just gonna show you that. When you have your fabric off the bolt, it has a selvage on one edge and a fold on the other. So this is 22 inches wide and the full width of fabric is 44. So when you're cutting it something, you need to line it up so that it is cut being cut with the grain. The grain going up and down is parallel to the selvage and the fold. So when we're saying cut this on the fold, we don't actually mean this fold here. You can do that for a non-directional fabric, but technically fabric goes up and down this way, not that way, and definitely not at an angle because you'll get stretch. So when you're cutting something on the fold, you have the option of folding this in half this way And cutting it like this but then you'll have two because you've got two layers so what you'll do is open it up all the way then fold it in half then place it on here when you're folding put placing something on the fold. Make sure your pattern piece is lined up right to the edge or even slightly just over it. Because if you have just a little bit sticking out here, that's gonna add an eighth to a quarter of an inch to the height of your pattern. So what I actually like to do is trace. This makes it so much easier. Definitely on vinyl I trace. On fabric a lot of times I'll just pin it down, but on vinyl I would do one this way, trace this out put two little markings right there and then line this up on those two little markings, trace this out and then cut the whole piece out as one. Just like I did with this vinyl one. I've got my little markings and that's pretty handy because in a moment we're gonna talk about markings and I've already made these little clip marks right where I ended my pattern piece. Another thing to note is make sure that you're cutting and drawing just past on the edge of the black line around. Don't cut your paper templates out right on the black line, or you'll find that your template pieces are gonna get smaller and smaller because you'll lose that edge. And when I trace something out, like, where's my pen? 
when I trace something out, if you then cut on that outside line, your pieces are going to get bigger and bigger. So when tracing, you actually want to cut on the inside of the line. So cut here. Okay, so you can cut your strap on a double layer. You'll do that first. So this is your first piece you've cut, which is the width of fabric. And then you also need a small, smaller piece that is 26 inches long. So I just do 13 inches uh, on the fold, and that's 26 inches long. And then we're going to cut our front piece after that. Cutting list number three applies to whether you're doing cotton or vinyl. Everybody needs to cut these. Let's talk a little bit about directional fabric. Of course, I'm trying to find one that's uh, directional in my fabric stash, and all I found were these adorable pink flamingos. If you cut this pattern for A on the fold, like so, your flamingos on the back are going to be upside down. So a workaround for this is to use your lining template. Pull out your lining template. It, ha it is exactly the same size, but it has a seam allowance added across the bottom. And what you'll do is you'll just cut two of those. You can do it on a double layer. And then what you'll do is just sew them across the bottom using a 3 8 seam allowance and press that open and flat and you'll have one large panel that now has penguins go or penguins flamingos going one way on the front and uh, the opposite direction on the back step two we're going to be transferring our pattern markings and attaching our interfacing and fleece transfer their markings where I mention it. When I say transfer the markings, the best way to do that is actually to poke a hole right in the center of these dots and then you can transfer your markings that way. They'll just go right onto your fabric in the center like that and you can darken them up if needed. Pay close attention to where it says should be not disappearing pen or disappearing pen because if you do transfer your markings onto these base pieces and you use a pen like a pilot friction pen that irons off when we do iron these together they um, the markings will come off the clips that I'm talking about you can do this while you're tracing out your template or after but you can do a little pen mark on here when, and then clip them with the scissors and I also like to mark my rivets on the front of my bag flap. If you've made one of these bags, your center placement is already cut out. But if you haven't stitched yet, you'll still have this um, section in here. You can use two things. You can use the bit that you cut out or you can use your stabilizer piece. And this is how we're going to mark the placement holes for this one, okay? And for your lock, if you're making a bag with a magnetic snap, you're actually going to mark that on the lining piece. Now you can go ahead and fuse on your interfacing. It says to center the interfacing where required. So a lot of my interfacing, all of my interfacing, is much smaller than the pattern piece. And this is very important and on purpose. And there's some bags you can get away with having interfacing right out to the edges. But on this particular bag, it is important that they're smaller so that we don't have too much thickness. So center them where you can. They'll look like this. For these large pieces, we'll have up to a half an inch gap on the top and the bottom. And uh, the only things that you're not going to interface quite yet are the straps because we're going to interface these later when we sew these two strap pieces together. Then if you're making the cotton version, you'll follow the, dire the directions for the fusible fleece. And this is put on over top of your interfacing. So I do have the interfacing in there. If you peel it back, you can see the interfacing and then the fleece goes on top. Just a few tips for actually fusing interfacing and fleece. 
I spritz my interfacing with uh, a spray bottle or the spray on my iron and it pulls in a bit if it's going to shrink and then I use compression and steam and move throughout like this. You never want to iron like this because you'll stretch it. For the fleece, um, you can put a pressing cloth over top. Sometimes I wet that pressing cloth completely, put that over top, and it actually creates more steam. I just want to show you how we're doing that on our large exterior A, since the interfacing is actually um, in two pieces. We're just going to line up the bottom edge of the interfacing with the center markings we've made and you'll just put two pieces on and they will be butted up together just like so. And the fleece is also the same way. It's two pieces and this will be centered like so. And what you'll do is, ooh, that's dirty, just ignore that. I like to um, use my old scraps. so. You can create fold as well, center marking, and line it up with that center there just to make it easier. And then double check. So this one I'll fold as well. And then double check Oops, that that is center. So measuring on either side. I should also mention that none of the Decaville will be added at this time. Any of those pieces that are cut from this chart will be added later in the, in the instructions. So all you're doing right now is adding your interfacing and the fusible fleece if you're using it. Step three, we're going to start making the straps. I have these at the beginning because we will need to have some of these things made before we attempt to sew the pockets on page eight. So right at the very beginning, we're going to create one long strap. If you've cut this from the 60 inch wide vinyl, you don't need to do that. But if you are using quilting cotton and you've got two straps, we need to attach those together. This is how you do it. We do it with a, a 45 degree corner so that we have less bulk in the seam and it's not a big fat seam. So what we'll do is we'll just overlap the two ends of the shoulder strap. We have one, one, the bottom one right side up, the top one wrong side up and we'll just overlap the amount of a seam allowance so a quarter of an inch and draw a line using your ruler from one corner to the next or to the other one draw a line through there and then sew on that line and I've already done that I've already done the stitching line and now we'll just trim off a quarter of an inch seam allowance on there and then these little corners can actually get chopped off so that they don't stick out so that when you make the strap it's at a diagonal and when it's folded up it's less thick okay so we're going to actually press that seam open so that it's nice and flat i've got my iron here okay and after we're done ironing we will go ahead and put our interfacing on this piece the interfacing starts half an inch from the end so that we can looks like I need to trim that a little bit straighter so that we can have room to fold the ends over so just a half an inch from the end go along the length of your interfacing and fuse it all into place going right over top of this so you'll be butting these guys up end to end just like so. When one ends, the other one starts. Okay, so fuse all those together and get your strap ready, and then we're ready to fold it. So what we're going to do is we're going to work on the cotton straps first, and then I'll show you how to do the vinyl straps on the next page. So for the cotton straps, the same directions are needed for the shoulder strap, and the zipper pocket hangers. The zipper pocket hangers are uh, these straps that go across here. And there's two of those. This is the zipper pocket hanger. And you'll do the same thing for the shoulder strap. You're gonna fold the end over half an inch. And you may notice that these don't have interfacing on them. It's not required for the zipper pocket hanger. 
I would say it's always required for a shoulder strap though. So fold each end of the straps over a quarter of an inch and press. Fold the entire thing in half lengthwise evenly and press. And this gives you a nice center fold line to work with. And then what you'll do is go down the length of it, pressing, folding and pressing the side over towards the center line. And then you can flip it around. My iron doesn't seem quite hot enough. You can flip it around and press the other side to the center line as well. Looks like I need to get some water in my iron as well. I like to use steam with this, with my hands out of the way. It just gives it a really nice crisp press. And then we fold the whole entire thing again, lengthwise, meeting up the edges, make sure that they are not overhanging and give it one more final press. So using this method, you can make your zipper pocket hangers and your shoulder strap. When you're done folding that up and pressing it, you do need to sew around all four sides with a 1 8 of an inch or three millimeter seam allowance. I've done that on my other pocket hanger just to show you how that's done. Okay, so now we're going to flip the page and make our handle. The handle for cotton has a Decaville piece inside of it. And this is your 11 inch long piece. And we're gonna fold this just about the same, but we're not gonna fold the ends over. We're gonna leave those raw edge because we're gonna have our metal uh, strap ends on the ends of those. So we don't need to fold the ends over. So fold that in half and get yourself a really nice crease to, to go by. This will show us where the center is so we can get that R piece of Decaville um, right up next to the fold line. If it doesn't seem to have adhered right away, just give it some time and it will stick better after it's cooled down. So when you fold something over something that is a little bit thick, it does create a bit of a gap. It doesn't meet all the way to the middle and that's okay. So we'll fold this over to the center and press. And this is done just the same way as we did the strap. And we'll keep that away from the Decaville just a little bit, an eighth to a sixteenth of an inch, just so that it folds over the thickness of it and isn't too small. So I've got those folded both to the middle and I'm going to fold that up. And press. Take this to the sewing machine and stitch around all four sides just like we did with the pocket hanger and what I'm going to do with the strap. I'll finish those up and then we'll work on the vinyl straps. Okay, I've made my handle, my two zipper pocket hangers and my strap. And now we're going to work on our vinyl ones. And they're done just a little bit differently because of course we can't iron vinyl. So let's just have a peek at our instructions and see which is first. Okay, so we're gonna do the shoulder strap and the handle the same. So just to, so you know, the handle is on the top and the shoulder strap are done with raw edges on the ends. They're done just like this um, handle for, that we made with the cotton. In order to find the center line, we're gonna use our ruler and it's a three inch wide strap, so half of that is one and a half inches. So we'll just do a quick line down the middle. Then we'll take our wonder clips and we'll clip the outer edge right to the center line, like this, going down the length of it about every two to three inches just to hold it in place. Okay and then turn it around and do the same thing. Now fold the whole thing in half and replace one of the clips. Make sure that these are lined up really evenly. Fold in half, 
reclip and you can take the ones out you don't need or if you feel better if you want more clips you can just reclip the one on the other side or both now we just need to top stitch around this and we do the same method as we did on the cotton one okay these ends are going to be left like that because we're going to put metal strap ends on them so we'll do that for the strap as well and sew around those for the zipper pocket hangers I've done something way different with them this one is a little bit weird and the reason is is because we don't necessarily want to have metal strap ends in here and we don't necessarily want to have raw edges so I've just made the ends so that they fold over we will be having some edge paint in the shop in the next couple of weeks and edge paint is just amazing product and we'll have colors to match our vinyl and basically it means that we can coat the ends and leave these raw edge and ends we're going to have the Giardini edge paint from Italy and it's about two weeks away so in the meantime we are going to fold the ends over using this method in my instructions and that way if you don't choose to get edge paint in the future you don't really need it so what we'll do is we'll just do a quick line down the middle so these straps are three quarters of an inch wide Oops. clips flying everywhere and then I like to do both at the same time and I just draw a line across the ends at one quarter of an inch or six millimeters down that side and down that side while you have your ruler here you can go ahead and do this marking that I show that is three eighths of an inch from the center so if you just put one of your ruler lines on the center line and mark over three eighths of an inch you can just draw a quick little dot there now you can draw from this point to here out to the edge with the ruler like so and that is your cutting line or if you do want to speed things up you can just line your scissor up at the center point and line it up with the marking at 3 eighths of an inch and snip across this way you don't actually have to draw each line in order to make our straps, we'll now do a length of double-sided tape right down the middle. We're not going to be stitching in the middle here, so it's fine to have this double stick tape that is quite tacky because there won't be any stitches there. The stitches will be on either side of it. So fold the outside edge to the center line and stick this down. So stick this all the way across both sides. If your tape's not quite as wide as what I'm using, you can just use two rows of it. The tape will be right down the middle. As long as it's not wider than, say, 5 eighths of an inch, then you will be just fine. Now we can push those little tips that we made, the little miters, over. I like to put a clip on the end just to hold it in place until it's time to sew. And then I'm going to take this to the machine and I'm going to sew all the way around all four sides. Okay, we're back for step four where we're going to start assembling the exterior. And the first thing we're gonna do is attach the magnetic snap. I went ahead and did that already. So I think I'll just refer you to the tutorial we have on our hardware installation page. We're gonna go ahead and start making the front flap. And for that, we need our exterior fabric pieces, not the linings. So I'll grab both of mine. And while I have this in front of me, the vinyl version, I just want you to make note of this little piece of tape right here. I've got a little tip here. I used a piece of double-sided tape that I just placed on here and 
marked my placement for the front lock there and I just left the paper on it and I can remove that and the tape after. So let's grab our front flap pieces. I've got two. I've got the cotton version and the vinyl version and I have uh, my rivet holes marked and we're going to put on our Decalil stabilizer. So you can get your template and place that over top and make sure that it's lined up absolutely perfect and the piece L that you cut from Decoville will fit just right into there. So spend a minute or a couple seconds and just line this up and make sure it's just so. And I actually like to keep the paper on there when I press it because then I protect the, the fleece a bit and just give it a good press and then can, so it doesn't slide around. Then you can take the paper off and you can even use a little bit of water on there and water helps the Decaville stick very well. And we'll just let that cool off before we move on to the next steps. I've already done that for my vinyl piece. And as you know, I'm making two bags. So I've got my lining for the outer, or sorry, for the vinyl version and my lining for the cotton. And we are going to stitch these now right side together. So we'll just line them up, matching all of our points, and we can clip around here. So I like to use these wonder clips with vinyl because they hold it right in the right spot, but they don't make holes. And um, I do have a tip for stitching around this point and the curve because we want this stitching line to be just perfect so that our metal trim fits. And how I do that is I actually draw my seam allowance on there's no harm in doing that. So just grab your ruler and draw your seam allowance on. It's 3 8 of an inch here and you can just line it up on the edges like so. And then on the point you can just do little dash lines around the curve and connect the dots and you can stitch along there. So sew along both sides and along the bottom edge but don't stitch this quite yet. We're going to leave that open and we come back, we're going to clip our seams and turn through there. Okay, so we've stitched around all sides and now we need to trim our seam allowances. So actually I already started doing it around here. Um, you can use pinking shears for this. I just like to trim these down to 1 8 of an inch. Clip your corners like so. And this just makes it easier to turn. So 1 8 of an inch is all you need around here. Okay, so when that's done, you can turn it right side out, like I've already done on this one, and give it a good press for cotton. For vinyl, we definitely cannot press this or it will melt. Then we're ready to insert our Decoville stabilizer. So this has a shiny side and a matte side. The shiny side is the glue. And for this flap, I like to keep it towards the shiny side up towards the lining. Then when we press this, we actually have um, it fusing to the lining fabric. So I like to curl it inwards like this and slide it in all the way to the end. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the Decoville over top of the seam allowance, which can be a bit tricky. So go ahead and try to get this right down to the end. And what we want to see is we want to be able to see a 3 8 inch gap here right between where the Decaville sits and the edge of the fabric. We don't want Decaville in that seam allowance and it actually should be able to push all the way to the end. So just if you need to stick your hand in and pull it down into the end and then you can flatten it out so that you have that gap here and then after it's all flat and you've reached in and you've smoothed out all your corners you can then take this to the ironing board and press this really well. You can even use steam so that it sticks. Just being very careful not to press here. So you can put a pressing cloth over if you need to. Okay, so that's all done on this one. I've inserted the Decaville and I've fused everything in place. I spent some extra time making sure that this was really fused well. I used some steam, even you can spritz it with a little bit of water, and I really pressed well around this snap part so that um, it sticks really well so we don't have any pulling later on. 
This is the cotton version, of course, and you can really push out the seams to make sure that the lining isn't showing on the front. And then what you can do with this is stitch down the sides with a really nice, beautiful top stitch at about 1 8th of an inch. Take your time, make sure it's nice and neat, and then you can baste across the top edge. And I've done that already on my vinyl version. I've done my top stitching and also baste it across the top. I find it easier to baste with the vinyl side down so you don't get any um, drag with the foot sliding on here and pushing. And then we can actually just trim any extra lining that sticks out right off the bottom and we're ready to move on to the next step. Okay, we finished our front flap and we can put those to the side. I just wanna remind you to continue to read all your instructions. There are tips and tricks and instructions in here that I might not mention on camera, so you do still need to follow along. Now we're going to add our base stabilizers to the outer fabric as well as the body stabilizers. I'm working on the quilting cotton version. You can see that I have my cotton interfacing and my fusible fleece here. The fusible fleece is smaller than the body, uh, the base stabilizer and the body stabilizers and that is on purpose so if you see that they don't come out all the way to the edge that is totally okay. So take your base stabilizer number one which is N and we're going to line that the placement markings even with the slits that we cut on the edges here. So I like to just put a large ruler across it like so and line it all up and then you can move this so that the placement markings are even with the ruler. And then you also want to measure on either side of these to make sure it's perfectly center. So I just take my ru ruler on this side and I've got about two and seven eighths. And on this side, I also have about two and seven eighths. Now, take your iron and press that in place. That is the bottom layer, but we are gonna put on two. And then you can go ahead after this and add your P pieces. One goes on the top and one goes on the bottom. And when I place these, I make sure the edge is 1 16th or less in between the base and the body. Same for the other side. We really want to make sure that we have a even amount on the top and bottom and all sides and that this stabilizer is not in our seam allowance. So you should have about a half inch at the top and the bottom. So press those in place, make sure you measure the sides and then you can actually go ahead and put on your base stabilizer too. This one has the markings for the purse feet and so you can measure this bit here and this, they should be the same. Place it in here and also press this. I use a lot of steam. I actually spray these with water and then you let this sit for at least a half an hour to cool and then it'll stick in place. If you get a little bit that pulls up on the edges, that is totally okay. We're gonna actually be putting on a lock and a front flap and those are gonna be held in place by when we do a few more steps. After all this fusing is done, you're gonna to wanna to flip it over and press that again to get out any wrinkles or bubbles that may have formed. I've actually just got my vinyl version done. I want you to have a look at number 15 where we trace out the Q pieces. So at this time, we're not actually going to be fusing these additional stabilizers. These are the additional optional pieces that are described in the materials list and in the cutting list as optional. They just create a little bit of an extra stiffness. On my vinyl bag, I'm going to go ahead and choose the Decaville optional stabilizers. And on the cotton bag, I'm going to use foam. So all we have to do at this stage is actually just trace them in place. After we sew the exterior of the bag, we're gonna slide these in after. That way we're not turning something right side out that is really stiff and hard to turn. So we add these in later so that it's not so hard to turn. So what we'll do is we'll just push your Q piece up against your base and 
there will be a little bit of a gap. You can notice one eighth of an inch on either side and that's totally okay and expected. And what you're doing at this time is actually just tracing its placement. So we'll trace around here. Okay, so we'll take those off and that'll be markings for later. All right, let's put some purse feet in. We already have the markings on our base stabilizer. Now we just need to make some holes. Normally, I just make some little slots with a seam ripper, but since we have a lot of layers here, I'm going to go ahead and use my punch just to create some small holes. So we'll insert one of the purse feet right into the hole and I turn it so that when I split it, the prongs are going outward instead of out towards the edge. And then I'll just put a washer on, putting the purse feet prongs through only one of the holes because these holes are a little bit too far apart for putting them in separate holes. And we split that out like that. I used to put glue on the back of my purse feet, but I found out after I was trying to take these out one day that if you just put a, that one's not open. If you just put a blob of glue over and then cover it nicely with a piece of fleece or interfacing, later on when it's dry, it's a very, very difficult to get out. So go ahead and put all those in. So now we're going to add our lock pieces. So if you haven't marked your front placement for your bag lock, you can do that now for both the lock or the magnetic snap. It looks like I haven't done that one. On this one, I'm putting in the magnetic snap and we already have good stabilizer on the back. So I don't really need to add anything to that. So what I'll do is just place this in front of me like so and then I'll use my washer and mark the two slots and this is just like how you put in the male side of the lock just use your seam ripper to cut the two holes you'll need a drop of glue on the back like so push that through now this is the side you need to make sure you don't hit with the iron because it does have the magnet in it. I do like to put something soft down before I fold the prongs over. So I'll just actually move this and we'll just put the washer over and I'll just use this screwdriver to fold over those prongs tightly. Okay, now we're gonna place our male part of the lock on the front of the gold vinyl bag. And what we'll need to do is we'll need to place the washer over top of the hole to make sure that we mar mark our slots in the right place. So I really want to make sure this is going straight. So what I'll do is I'll find the closest marking here across the top, that closest measurement, and we're at three inches. So I'll make sure that this line at three inches is paired up and matched right across the top edge of the vinyl. And that will make sure that my washer doesn't get crooked on me. So then I'm just going to make note of which holes I need to make for the prongs. And it is the ones that are two over on either side. And now I can go ahead and finish the lock just like I did the magnetic snap. Okay, so just flip it over and make sure it's still straight. Straighten it if you need to while the glue is still wet. Moving on to the next section, we're going to attach the bag flap, which is actually really easy to put on. So you need to make sure that you're working on the side, the side that does not have the snap or the lock placement, and just find your center marking there. The bag flap itself goes on wrong side up, so that we've got our lining side there and we're going to center it on our little center clipping that we did before. What we'll do is the bag flap is actually 10 inches wide exactly. So if you mark or if you place your five inch marking on your ruler right on that center mark, you'll be able to center your flap right on there if you line it up at the bottom edge and the 10 inch marking. 
if it's a little bit squished just pull it apart or center it in between there we've got our center marking on our flap lined up with that one there and now we can attach that there to make it stick in place I like to use the wash away wonder tape because we are going to be sewing through the tape so we don't want to use the be creative tape because it's too tacky and it will gum up your needle the wash away tape is not very tacky but it's just tacky enough to make sure it sticks our flap right where we want it so put it right to the very edge so that it it doesn't go past the quarter inch mark and put a line of it right across the top and tear it off. Then we can peel the backing off, maybe. I find it helps if you scrape the back with your nail. Okay, so we'll just make sure that I didn't move this over. Oh, and I did, so we'll fix that up. And you can line this up right on the center marking and stick that in place pull your ruler away and if you're not using tape because you totally don't have to get a pen out right now and mark a little dashed line right where you're placing this just so that if it does slide off when you're at the sewing machine you know exactly where to put it back i'm using the pilot friction pen and these iron off if I do get it passed onto this part it will come off another thing for you to do right now is trim any stray threads so that they're not poking out underneath the flap of the bag okay so those are all trimmed what we're going to do is we're going to stitch this down with two stitching lines. One is one eighth of an inch from the edge and the other is a quarter of an inch from the edge. So actually I find it really easy to just actually mark my stitching line to make sure that I'm stitching exactly where I want to be. Otherwise your bag could be, your bag flap could be crooked. So also my presser foot on my machine I'm using right now doesn't have a clear quarter of an inch marking. So I find if I put this on It'll show me right where to stitch. And also, this is not gonna be seen later, so don't worry about using ink. I'll just go stitch that up. I've already got this one done. This is my vinyl one. You can see my two stitching lines here. And what we'll do next is we'll just fold this over nice and smooth. And because our decoville ended there, we don't have any decoville in the seam, so it folds really nicely. Now we're going to stitch a box on here to secure it in place and I do like to do some back and forward stitching at each end just to make sure it's nice and secure this area will be getting a lot of wear and tear so you want to make sure that's strong when you fold it over and stitch you're going to be totally enclosing these edges right here let's go do that okay so I've stitched up those boxes and these are looking gorgeous Okay, let's get started on our hanging zipper pocket. The first thing we're gonna do is prepare our zipper. I've already stitched over the end of my zipper. Basically, just get this under the sewing machine and just go forward and backward a couple times and do some stitches just to hold the teeth together evenly. And then we can trim that off just a quarter of an inch past the stitching line. And we actually need a six inch zipper so that's two four six and oh my gosh you guys are probably all cringing now at me using my rotary cutter oh and this little bit right here is actually long enough for another bag so if you grab a bulk pack of our number three zipper pulls you can put those on there and i do have a video that shows you how to put sliders on so now we're going to just get the zipper ready and you just want to make sure you don't pull the slider straight off the back because it's not stitched there so it could come off so we'll take your zipper end material that I've asked you to cut and we're going to press that just like the straps it's kind of like a little mini half inch strap so it creates a little binding for the end and you can slide one end in and stitch across there cut it off and then put the other end in the little section that's left over 
and stitch across there and then you'll have a zipper that has binding on both ends. Okay, here's our zipper and we're ready to go to make the zipper pockets. When you get started, just make sure that you're using the width of the zipper across the top, sorry, the zipper pocket across the top, which is seven and a half inches wide. The height is only seven inches, so we wanna make sure we have the wide side across the top. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna flip our zipper over so it's upside down and you can slide the pull over so it's out of the way. And we'll just line up this top edge of the zipper to the top edge of the po pocket. I like to use either the quarter of an inch wash away wonder tape. It's a little bit wider so if it gets in your stitching lines it won't gum up your needle. Or the one eighth of an inch or three millimeter be creative tape. This one is really sticky and I'll use the skinny width so that it doesn't get in my stitching. And I've just put a strip of it across the top there. And then you can line up your zipper, just making sure that it is centered and you have the same amount on the left and right hand side. You want to be very sure that this is lined up just perfectly straight before you sew. You always get a little, of a bump, a little bit of a bump where the pull is but you can adjust that while you're sewing. What I recommend beginners do is actually just do a 1 8 of an inch basting stitch with your zipper foot down here. And that looks like this. So I've already done that on my second one. You won't have two pockets, but I've got two bags going here. So you can see my gray stitching. That is the 1 8 of an inch stitching line. When you get to the zipper, you lift your foot and pull it out of the way. And now we can go ahead and put on our other piece. This piece here I refer to as the piece that's going to be the exterior of the bag or the pocket actually, because when the pocket is finished, this, this piece is going to be visible on the outside of the pocket. This is actually going to be the lining of the pocket. So when it's finished, it'll be on the inside of the zipper pocket. I keep calling it a pouch. Okay, so what we'll do now is make sure we have the same width and I'll do another strip of the tape across the top. Okay, now we can center this and line up those edges just perfectly as well. Now we're gonna stitch down here using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. If you're at all unsure of how wide that is, you can go ahead and draw that seam allowance on. There's no problems there. I also use painter's tape on my sewing machine and I just can line up this edge with some nice green tape on there so I can see what I'm doing. So when you get to the zipper slider, just lift up your foot, pull it out of the way and keep on going. Okay, and while we're here, we're going to flip this piece down, leave the seam allowances there, and we're going to go ahead and top stitch along this edge right here. Make sure that the zipper pull is over to the side with the bottom facing up. This is the inside of the pocket. Okay, so we'll just use a 1 16th of an inch seam allowance. I don't really measure this, I just Sew it as straight as possible and really close to the seam. Okay, now we'll take this over to the table and we will attach zipper pockets to the other side. Okay, so we're just gonna fit, do the same to the other side and finish sewing those two pieces on. And when that's done, we'll also flip the interior piece to the side and top stitch along this one. And when we're done, we can take this to the iron 
and press these out so they're nice and smooth. So I'll just press the lining in the outer to this side and the this lining in the outer to this side and just press along the zipper. Okay, so we have gone ahead and pressed this flat. You can see that on the front side, I don't have any top stitching at all. And on the back, I've got the stitches I did that I was showing you while I was at the sewing machine. And what we're going to do now is we're going to add the zipper hangers just like it is shown starting at step 30. And this is actually really easy. So the most, well, actually what I've been doing lately is sticking them both on at the same time, then taking it to the sewing machine and sewing them. You don't have to do one at a time. So what I do is I get the backs of them lined up just here. And since we're gonna be sewing between this stitching line and this stitching line, but on these, I add a piece of double-sided tape that fits right in the middle. I just don't want to go past here, otherwise my tape will be too long. So I just fit that in. And then, okay. So now I'm just going to place these on the pocket about an eighth of an inch down. It doesn't have to be perfect. I wouldn't go lower than that though. And what you want to do is make sure that this amount on this side is equal to this side. So I just eyeball it. Just have a quick look, make sure that's nice and straight and stick that in place. And now I'll just make this one exactly the same. So I'll put that on there and stick that in place and make sure they're both even, yes. Okay, so the most important thing is that you don't sew these down going through both the outer and the inner pieces. You have to flip back the lining on that one and then take this to the sewing machine and sew a square right here. I do find it helpful to just do a chalk line right where I want it to start and stop and I like it to start and stop just right where this stitching is. Okay. And then what I'll do is I'll sew a box just through here and um, just through the one layer and then I'll flip these other two linings, or the two linings, back and do the same thing on this side and sew a box. You'll stitch right on the same stitching line as you had before. And I've already done that on my vinyl version. And um, I trim the threads or you can pull them to the back. And as you can see, I've only gone through one layer and not through both, okay? Now we're ready to actually move on to where diagram 33 shows that we're gonna stitch the sides. So I'll show that to you on this one. And what we'll do is you wanna make sure that your two outer pieces are together and your two lining pieces are together. So we just have to pull that one back. But you don't want to stitch over these two tails. So what we do is just fold them to the inside and then fold this back. And then we'll do the same thing over here. We'll just tuck these in. And then you will match your seam allowances here. And on the other side, keeping those tucked. And this is super easy. We're just gonna draw or stitch two straight lines down the sides. And I like to actually make my lining um, seam allowances just a little bit deeper or wider than my outer so that when the lining sits in the exterior, it sits a lot flatter and smoother. So. I'll just put another clip right here since those keep popping out on me. So the exterior, the outer of the zipper pocket are these two, the ones with the, t um, the tabs I've sewn on. The lining, the ones that sit inside the pocket are these two. So what I do like to do is stitch these ones at my regular seam allowance, which is 3 eighths of an inch. But when I get to here, I take it in a little deeper and end up at a half inch at the bottom. So this um, will be a little bit smaller at the bottom than this one. So then when you're done that, you can turn it right side out, 
actually you can press the seam allowances open, turn it right side out, and then we're going to be ready to attach it to our lining. I'm back from sewing these sides here and I forgot to tell you the most important thing written in red letters right here, open the zipper all the way. So I caught it just in time. You have to have your zipper open or you can't turn it right side out. So I've sewed the sides, I've given it a nice press, and now we're going to move on to the next steps, which is to punch the holes. So we're just going to punch holes only on these ends. We're not going to put any rivets in. And then we're going to attach it to the lining. Okay, so what you'll need to do is just grab a ruler and measure in three eighths of an inch from the ends and mark holes right in the middle of each side. Then you can use a rivet punch. So this punch is about two and a half millimeters to three millimeters in size and then mark the holes. I've already done that on the vinyl version and I've got my holes right there. I make sure they're lined up together so you're going through both layers at the same time so that they're nice and even. And now we just need to get this onto our lining piece. So we get one of our lining pieces and we do have that center marking already in place there. It's right there, you can't see it. And then we'll center the pocket piece just on top of that. And I found the center and put a little mark there just by measuring. It's about six and three eighths in from each end. But you can fold it or you can measure and mark. And I'll baste across the bottom here and then I will place this on top, clip it together and sew across the bottom here, press my seams open and the lining is done for now. We're going to move on after that to step six, final assembly. And this is actually going to go really quickly and then we're going to be done our bag. Okay, at the step six, final assembly, we're going to put our exterior and our lining together to make one large panel. So let's get our two panels and we're going to place them right side together. But before we do that, we sort of need to work out where you want your zipper. Do you want your your zipper to be opening left and to right or right to left. I personally like when I open my bag and I'm looking down into it, I want it opening left to right. So we'll close it and make sure this is the way it stays. So let's just pretend to put our bag together. So if we had our bag together and the lining was inside and the bag was closing, that would be the way that I want it. So that is situated with the flap at the top and the zipper pull on the left. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip this back like so and just flip them over that way and we still have them set up the exact same way. So I'll make sure you fold your flap back so it's nice and straight and flat and put these now right sides together. We will match all of the center markings on all four sides and on this side you have your lining matched up with the center marking there or sorry the lining seam. Now I should mention to make sewing this a little bit easier on the sides you can trim these seam allowances back about three inches and that will make sure they stay out of or there's a little bit less thickness in the seam later. We're only going to sew around three sides of this and we're going to leave this open. I'll just put a clip right where I want to start my stitching and right where I want to stop my stitching, right there. So we'll only sew in about an inch and a half on each end. So that leaves this big, huge side opening, which is perfect because we have all this Peltex on here, in here, and it'll make it so easy to turn. So what you can do now is matching up all of your markings 
and clipping all the way around. You can stitch around the outside of your bag using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, we've got everything clipped around the outside and I'm just gonna go sew around here and leave this open. When you're done that, we're going to mark the seam allowance on the opening. Okay, I've done all my stitching. Now I'm going to go ahead and trim all the way around the outside, except I'm not going to trim this area here. You can cut your corners off at an angle and trim the whole seam allowance down to a quarter of an inch. I actually like to do this with my rotary cutter. It makes it super fast. Just be careful you don't get too close. Okay, I've trimmed all that away, and now I'm going to turn it right side out through the opening. Okay, when you turn it right side out, be really careful not to pull on the flap. And I find it works easier to just grab a corner from across that is opposite and start pulling that through. Now you're gonna poke your corners out, and we'll give it a nice press around the edge. If you feel like any of your decoville has come unattached, that's okay. You can give it a nice press from the inside to re-adhere it. After we get it turned right side out, now we want to look at our optional cue pieces. These are either in decoville or foam, and in this cotton bag, I'm going to put in the foam just to add a little bit of strength in here. So what we'll do is slide them inside and center them and align them up right in those areas where we did our pen drawings. So they will be butted up fairly close to the base and really just reach in and look through and make sure you've got them all lined up. And um, for the foam, I use just some spots of our clear drying E6000 glue and this does take about 20 minutes to dry. So very carefully slide these pieces in, trying not to get glue absolutely everywhere. And just double check that you're where you need to be, press it down firmly and let that dry. And I'll put another one on this side as well. For the vinyl version, I did use the Peltex pieces in this one already and um, after I turned the bag right side out it was a little wrinkly so I put a pressing cloth over this area and I smoothed it out and when I took this to the iron to press those Decoville pieces in place it did take the wrinkles out of the back. I would hang this lock part just over the edge of the ironing board so it didn't stick up like that. So I just put it over the edge and then I could press this nice and smooth. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, after I get both of these in, is we are going to close this hole. And I had a great tip from one of my sewers, which is to use wash away wonder tape to help turn. Now it's really important that this is the wash away because the heavy tack be creative will be way too hard to sew through. So actually I placed the tape just on the edge of the pen line that I drew and as you'll see when I fold it it actually makes a very very good crease just on the edge of the tape so it folds over perfectly and sticks in place and I'll do that on both sides, the front and the back or the lining. I'll stick that all together and then I'll just anchor it or clip them together like so. So spend a bit of time on this, make sure it's nice and accurate. These seams will be hidden in the final project but you just want to make sure that both of your sides are the same width. So we don't want to take too much and fold too much to the inside here. I'll just bring back my vinyl version and I've already clipped a lot along here. I like to clip with my the front of my clips on this side because when I do my top stitching, I'm actually going to sew on the front here. And so, oh, if you've noticed this piece of tape, this is just so I don't scratch my lock. 
So I'll just go ahead and finish folding this over. For the vinyl, I actually don't use, I don't bother with the wash away tape because it's not really tacky enough. I just fold it over and clip along here. So when you're done that, take yours to the machine and do top stitching all the way around. I actually like to start on this side with the gap first. So I'll close this and then I'll just continue all the way around the panel, making some really pretty top stitching and closing that hole as I go. Okay, we've stitched all around the outside and we're just going to work on this section here. Now, please note that the instructions for that are on the previous page. So we're working with the bag panel lining side up and we're going to fold the outsides in. You need to be very careful that you don't actually bend your stabilizer that's inside there. So you can just feel for the edge and fold the side over gently. It doesn't have to be super tight. And what we'll do is we'll clip all the way up the side. So I like to find the top and clip there. And then the middle and then fill in in between. So once you've clipped all these sides together, you can take this to the sewing machine. And I like to work with the right side up. So I'll sew from the front of the bag and I'll do a quarter inch top stitching seam allowance. I really need to use my walking foot with this. I find that it works a lot better. So if you've got dual feed or a walking foot, now's the time to use that. Okay, so we're just gonna start past the beginning of the front flap where it's attached and we're gonna sew right down the edge using a nice long stitch. And a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so I've stitched the sides up and now we're ready to start forming the side sections. So we'll take this so it's right side out and fold it right in half. And we're gonna work on these outer edges right ah, here. So we're not gonna stitch the whole thing right now. We're just gonna stitch the bottom two inches. So what I do is I like to make sure that these top corners are nice and even so that when we have our bag complete, those will match beautifully. And then I match this down the sides with some clips like so and then we'll form a point here which should be at center and we'll measure up you can just squish that just like that we'll measure up two inches from the bottom edge and mark a line and that's going to be our stitching line so I'll take this to the machine and just sew here and I'll go right on the stitching that I had before. Okay, so I've stitched just two inches at the bottom on both sides and now we're gonna flip it wrong side out. And we're going to sew up the sides. Now what we need to do is get this two inches up in between the sides. So how we do that is stick your finger into the point and push it up and this is going to be sandwiched in between. Now that's kind of hard, it keeps sliding out on me. So all you need to do is just bend that base in so that it is poking inwards and then this will pull up beautifully. And then we'll just clip this together like so and clip it all the way up the side. You shouldn't actually have any trouble sewing this with the cotton version. You should be able to stitch right on to the stitching lines. If you have left out your seam allowances, I'm sorry, you, if you have left out interfacing in the seam allowances, you can just take this to the machine just exactly like this. Hold this down with this poked bottom poked inward and sew, and sew right on top of your previous stitching line 
and right over the end. At this point here, when you get to the bump, you may need to use a hump jumper to get up there, but you could also just stop stitching right there, back up, put your foot on top of here, and then stitch forward and back and reinforce that well. Now, if you are using vinyl, I will have an alternate method, which is just to stick a rivet right in there if you can't get through there. And I'm gonna show you that in a moment. Now we've just stitched our last seams on this bag. It looks a little weird, we've got this pocket hanging out, but we're gonna make this look gorgeous. If you're doing the vinyl version and you're going to have st trouble stitching through here, I'm gonna actually show you two alternate versions after this is done. So I'm just gonna wrap up this bag and finish it up and then we'll pop into a couple alternate versions. So before you turn this right side out, very important, we do need to cut or punch our holes here for our rivets. So we're just gonna measure in 3 eighths of an inch from the top and the sides and make a dot. And the same on the other side. And then we'll punch these holes and don't put any rivets in yet. We're not ready for rivets there. Let's turn this bag right side out after you punch the holes. And after you've done that, we'll attach the pocket. Okay, so we've turned the bag right side out. Now we can give it a quick press to get out those wrinkles. I like to use my sleeve press, or you can just use the side of your ironing board, or a tailor's ham, or some fabric stuffed inside. And I use my mini iron for this. It's a little steam travel iron and this works great. So just make sure you don't touch that magnet and you can press out the wrinkles on the front and back. Now we just need to get that pocket up here and attached in place. So we've got our holes all made already. So we just need our rivets. Okay, so these are the medium rivets. If you've used thicker fabric, you'll need to use some longer rivets. So I'll just put the post in one side and then through the hole and then the other one on and we'll just click the back of the rivet on. So those aren't set yet, they're just clipped together. So we still need to use our setting tools to put those in place. We're going to get started attaching these rivets and I feel like the gold bag with the gunmetal rivets would be so much easier for you to see than these little gold rivets in here. So I've went ahead and set these and finished it up and I just couldn't stop. I had to finish my gorgeous bag. I'm so happy with the way this turned out and I'm going to show you how to finish it up on the gold vinyl version and put our lock on and everything. So here it is. I, when I turned this one right side out, I ended up taking my little iron and pressing inside here just to smooth out a couple wrinkles that I had on the back. And that worked really well. So I've gone ahead and clipped my gunmetal rivets into the inside in here but they still need to be set. I used medium rivets in here and they worked fine. I put them through. There was a little bit showing on the end, but the cap side of the rivet does have a small little lip on it, a little flange, and it will go inside the fabric a little bit. So you can get away with having a rivet that is just a little bit shorter than the area that it's going through. So there's two ways of doing this. We can use our anvil and setter, or we can use a rivet press, which I just have over here. This is the more economical tool, but it's not quite as handy. 
So it's a little bit hard for you to see in here how to set the rivets. So I think what I might do is for the actual setting and hitting of them, I'll show you that when I'm doing my strap. But to get these in here, we will place the anvil, which has a curved section. You don't use this pack part on the back with the bump. And it'll go under the rivet cap and then the setting tool that also has a concave end will go over top and then you hit this with a hammer. A couple things that I need to recommend for you is that you don't do this on a tabletop. You can get away with doing it on a tabletop if it's over a leg or it's the most sturdiest table ever. There's actually just too much bounce in your table for the energy to go through because this rivet needs to split and open up inside the cap. So I use this cutting board, I take it down to a concrete floor and I set them that way and then we, we will have total success opening up those rivets. For now, I am going to use my press and it's kind of hard to see from the side, but um, I have it slide inside the bag and I line my rivet up right underneath and that is done. And I'll just do the other side. And I will have a video on our website where I show you exactly how to do this in a couple of weeks when our rivet presses arrive. So first of all, we already have our markings on here and I'm just gonna cut our holes. And I need to do the same for the handle and the strap. So for the handle, we need to measure in on each end and mark our holes. So you'll measure in one inch and two inches from each end and I put a dot right there. And on the other end, the same thing, measure in one inch from the end and then two inches from the end. And those are your placement markings. So we can cut those holes as well and we're ready to get this handle right onto the bag. This is so easy. So basically all you do is you put a rivet in and go through the front flap. And you can see how there's a little bit of the rivet post sticking out, that's perfect. And we'll snap this one onto the back. Then we're going to slide on a D-ring. This is for our hooks for our strap. And then another one. And we will do the same to the other side. Okay, now let's just set the rivets. We'll just make sure this stays centered on that anvil and this needs to stay straight right up and down and we give it a couple of very firm blows. Now we always have to check to make sure that it's set. So get your fingernail underneath there, make sure it's really tight and it's not loose on the front and back and then you know it's done. Okay, so I'm going to finish those and then I'll show you how to do the strap. Okay, we've got our shoulder strap and we are going to thread it onto our strap slider. So for the wide mouth slider, the curved bumps should be on the top so that we get our strap going the right way. And we'll just slide one end in from the bottom and fold it over. And I've already put the holes in, but basically you put your hole just past your slider so that you have room to attach it uh, with rivets and clip that together. I will put, I will set that after, but just right now while we're on camera, I'll just go ahead and um, finish making the strap. So you just want to slide it through one of the swivel snap hooks and back onto itself and make sure it's not twisted and then we'll go right back through the strap slider and I'm going to leave these ends raw edge for right now and when we get our edge paint on the third 
I am going to coat them with some yellow ochre edge paint. So now I'm going to thread the other end into this hook and put another rivet in here. Okay, and after these are set, this strap is ready. Okay, so the last thing we have to do is just do the lock and the strap pins. The strap pins are super easy. Basically, you just slide them on with a bit of glue and put the screws in the back. A couple of tips for the fabric ones, I would use fray check or fray stopping liquid on the end so you have less fraying. And when you're attaching them, poke a hole with an awl first to get your screw started and then insert your screws there. Okay, those look great. Now we have two more things to do. Put the trim on and the bag lock. I like to put the bag lock on first and what we'll do is just confirm its placement and that's why I had you do this temporary spot, this temporary tape, just in case there were some issues and um, the bag flap didn't land exactly where you want it to. I'm actually really happy with that just where it is. Now you may have noticed I do have some really nice folds here. So what I did was when I was making it or now it would be a great time to just fold it alongside the edges of where the deck wheel is and make some really nice creases. You will notice that right now while it's new the front of it tends to curl a bit like that. So I'll just take it and fold it up and sort of train it to fold under. And you can do this again after the bag is made and it'll lay a lot flatter that way. So we'll get our lock out and we'll find out exactly where to put it with the back plate. So put the plate right over the center marking and then we'll grab a ruler just to make sure it's super straight. So what I want to do is just make sure that I'm not tilting it this way or this way. So we can line up the center and then sort of measure out from the sides. I've got three and six here, or sorry, three and nine. And I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. So I'm going to mark this with a pen. So I'll mark the whole way around. So I'm just going to take that off and I can remove that tape now. Okay, if you notice on the back side of the front plate, there are borders around the cutting hole. So what I'm going to do is just draw those in because we actually have to cut it a little bit bigger than this. Than this. So I'm going to just draw in those borders. And this is actually where we're going to cut. Okay, and then I will first cut the holes on the ends with a nice big circle punch. This is my number six punch, which is three sixteenths or four millimeters. And we want to be careful we don't take too much out here because as you can see on the plate there is not a lot of room here between the screw hole and the edge so it's better to be conservative in the beginning and then take out more a little later than it is to take out more at once you can cut these out with scissors and what i would do then is take my seam ripper and and take out as much as i can and cut it with some really large shears we also have these shape punches on the website and they work really well. There's 24 different sizes and we'll find a couple that work. Usually we don't have the exact shape but you can overlap them. I found this nice square one and it actually looks perfect. So I'm going to punch one hole here and one over here. Okay, now we'll have a little bit left over that we can't quite get out, and that's what the scissors are for. Okay, after we've got that all cleared out, we'll just test it for fit. We can test it from the back or the front. That looks really good. 
and this is where it's gonna go. So what I'll do is just add some glue onto the back of here and then also onto the back of here and screw these together. I like to use a clear drying fast tack glue. We use E6000 and we sell this in small precision tips on the website. These, this is not really a precision tip, but I had a leftover glue, so we can't waste it. I have scraps of Decoville I use, and I cut up little bits of it, and these make great little spreaders for our glue. Now I wanna make sure I don't scratch this when I flip it over. So I'll just put a little something behind it. And we'll press the fabric in around all the edges. And I see a few stray threads there, but I'll just wipe those out of the way. And a little bit more glue on the back. A little bit goes a long ways. You don't need very much of this at all. Okay, then the screws. Awesome. That looks great. So now I'm going to put on my trim and basically this is just the same method. I do have some tips though. When you're putting on your screws, I do recommend you try them out in your holes first. These are just the teeniest, tiniest little screws and they're so easy to cross thread. So measure this for center. So on each side of here, this side is about two and a quarter, and this one looks like it's two and a quarter. I'm just gonna double check and make sure it looks good and lined up next to this lock. And this could use a little bit of glue in the channel too. Honestly, the glue is what holds it in. The screws really just tack it in place while the glue is drying. So I'll get some glue on there and get these screws, and then I'm really excited to show you my finished bag. Okay, let's see how it looks. Oh my goodness, and we have to get those straps on there. I need to see what those look like as well. Okay, I've never done gunmetal and gold before, and this looks amazing. I have two other methods for sewing sides here. If this isn't working too good for you and you're under the sewing machine and you're breaking needles, then what you can do is just sew as much as you can and then pop in a rivet here and here. This will hold it together for you. I've got another method here for you that works awesome. One of my testers, Mel, showed this to me. And what we will do is do it from the inside out. So you want your bag folded in half so the outsides are in and nothing is stitched here yet. What I've gone and done is marked four inches up from the bottom edge, four inches to here. And what we'll do is we'll actually sew only to that four inch marking. So here's the marking. We're only gonna sew to here. We'll just hold those together like that and when we get to the marking we'll just reverse to make sure that's nice and strong okay so now we can actually just open that right up and what we're going to do is fold this so that the center line comes right up into that seam creating a Y. Okay, so I'll clip these together so that they don't slide. And now we're going to sew this section and this section, just like this. So we'll get that under there. So what this is doing is it makes it so that you're not sewing through all layers and only two at a time, or two layers of so go as far as you can, get that clip out of there, and then reverse. Okay, now I'm just going to pull that out and tackle the other side. So I'll just 
fold that over. And now I'll just get that bit left over. So now I have these stitched completely like this and we can fold this up and you can now put a rivet in here or a couple rivets in here to hold this together. Thanks so much for sewing with me today. I hope you follow us on Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. All of the links for the products and our socials are in the links below. Happy sewing! Thanks for sewing with me, or what would be a fun thing to see? Thanks for sewing along. Thanks for sewing along. Look at the camera. Thanks for sewing along. Nope. Uh, yeah. I don't know what else to say. No, that's good. Okay. Thanks for sewing along. Hey, right. stay cool, San Diego. <laughs>